Okay. In the previous video, we set up Ghidra. Um, so if you're following along at home, you should be ready to import a program into into Ghidra and have Ghidra, Ghidra do its magic. So the way we import a program, uh, there's a couple of ways. We can import a single file, a single binary, or we can do multiple binaries. Um, in this case, we're only going to import a single file. However, we're also going to import the libraries that go along with that binary. So, as I explained in the previous video, the uh, difference between example and example stripped is the example stripped is going to have um, the uh, symbols stripped away from the binary. So it's going to be a little more challenging um, if you if you if you're in a real world scenario um, and you have a binary that doesn't have symbols in it. It's uh, sometimes a bit more complicated to reverse engineer than one that does have symbols in it simply because you don't have names or you don't have uh, things like the name of functions for instance a lot of times you know most developers will name a function um, related to what the function does so that helps you as a reverse engineer uh, to kind of have an understanding of what the function will do before you do any analysis on that function. So, um, for this example, we're going to do the example stripped. And then, what we want to do is we want to tell Ghidra that we want to import the libraries that go along with this program. So the way we do that um, when we import the program is to choose options, choose the checkbox, and edit paths. And as you can see, um, I did this off, uh, off camera, but there I have a number of um, library paths here. And if I wanted to add another one, I could just simply hit add here and choose which path in the file system that I wanted to add or, or that I wanted Ghidra to look for the libraries that go along with this binary. So we're going to choose OK out of this. Choose OK there. And we're going to let Ghidra do its magic. Okay, so we have a number of files that we just imported, and Gidra is asking us, do we want to do analysis on this first binary? Uh, we're going to go ahead and choose a yes, and it gives us the option to so the way that Ghidra does auto analysis is there's a number of analyzers that either you can add as a plugin to Ghidra or Ghidra has by default. Um, and you can see the ones that are check marked here, the, the default ones. Along with these, you have options. So for instance, ASCII strings. Um, like strings are very important in the RE process because a lot of times you'll have a log file or something like that that you're maybe looking for something very specific from that log file that's contained in the binary and that'll give you a clue on how to get started doing the, the reverse engineering on the binary um, so for instance, this ASCII strings analyzer allows me to choose the minimum string length 
uh, in um, in which it will uh, say that a you know it's a valid string or not, or, or not. So if it comes across in this case the default is five, if it comes across an ASCII uh, character set that is more than five characters, then it it's going to think that that is a string and report to you that that is a string so uh, there's different ones here as well I'm not going to go through all of them but uh, so for instance a demangler in C++ demangling is, is something that's very important um, uh, you have non-returning functions, so an example of this would be if you have a function that has a forever while while loop, um, that would be non-returning. So uh, those are sometimes important. The stack analyzer is, is very important. Uh, so for this instance, we're just going to choose the default settings. We're not going to change anything. But just be aware that you do have a number of options when you're running Ghidra's Auto Analyzer. We're going to hit OK there, and this screen is going to give me information about what Ghidra was able to import. And you can see down here um, that we imported a number of reference libraries that go along with this binary um, so for instance this one we didn't have in the path um, so it didn't find that so if we needed to do analysis on this binary for some reason we would have to import this binary um, uh, you know we, we, we do we, we can import the binary it just didn't auto import it so I'll kind of show you in just a moment uh, why that is important. So we're just going to hit OK here. And we're going to go ahead and do analysis on these libraries here. OK. So as you can see here, um, we have one, two, three, four, five files that we imported. The first one here is the binary, and everything else here are libraries. Um, and we can also see that in our main Ghidra display here. Um, so this is called the listings view. This basically gives you the disassembly and other information about the binary. This right here will be the decompiler view. Um, we'll get into what that looks like a little bit later, but basically over here what's going to show is uh, a pseudo C type uh, language um, based on where you're currently browsing here, but it only it only shows up whenever you're inside of a function or something that it's recognized as um, operation codes. So down here, you can see that I have a functions tab. These are all of the functions that Ghidra has recognized in this binary, and I also have a strings tab, um, and these are all the strings that Ghidra has recognized in in the library. This column right here is where these strings are located so again those are you know important um, if if you've viewed a log file and there's something specific that um, you're interested in taking a look at uh, this you know and if it was a string this is this would be where you would find it um, and if you don't have those the way that you if you don't have those in your view, the way that you find those is you go up to the window and you just choose them. So um, you have, let's see, functions right here and then the find strings. The other view that I sometimes use is the disassembled view. Um, so we'll pull up the disassembled view 
and just kind of put it down there for now and I'll show you how to you know what what that's gonna look like in just a moment um, so I don't want to get too much into doing the analysis but I do want to show you uh, the advantage of having these additional libraries um, that Ghidra imports so the very first thing that you're usually going to want to do um, if if there's not a specific place or like a string or a specific place that you're looking um, in the binary for a specific function for instance then you're usually going to want to find main there's a couple of ways to do that if you have symbols you can hit G the hotkey G um, that's going to bring up this go to window you can type in main and as we can see here um, since we don't have symbols then Ghidra doesn't know where main is the way we find that um, again this is an elf file and this is going to be applicable to uh, most elf files there's a text um, section that you can find over here these are all of the sections that that uh, compose of the binary if we click on this text section then we get uh, to the entry function and the entry function has this libc start main um, so not every F file will be exactly like this in its entry um, you just kind of if you can find entry then you can find main main will always be an entry so but in this case it has this function libc start main and it has these arguments so the reason why we have a symbol here is because if we hover over this we can see that it's an external function call so what happens is whenever this gets executed um, it actually uh, this function is actually executed from a shared binary in Ghidra we can double click on this and it tells tells us which shared binary that is if we have imported it if we have not imported it it'll say external just like this if we double click right here then Ghidra will take us to the location in the shared library in which this external function call happens so this is our libc start main um, and if we wanted to then we could do analysis on this function to see what it's going to do however this is a common um, a common function and it's in libc.so so most likely there's going to be information about it online so if we we do a Google search here my control C works um, then we can see that libc start main has a number of arguments so this is the function signature here the very first argument is a pointer a function pointer to main so perfect if we go back here then this is shown to us in hex uh, in this instance um, but we can double click on it and it takes us to the function that's at this location and we can name this main so the way that I done that is I highlighted it and hit the hotkey L you can also right click rename function and changed it to name or to I'm, I'm sorry changed its name to main so the reason why you want to do this is because um, let me go back up here to um, where we are whenever the whenever it, the program first opens so earlier we were up here um, and We'll go here just a 
clear that view as well. And we wanted to find main. Well, I said we could, you know, hit G and we could type in main here. Now that we've named that main, this actually works, unlike it did before. So this is going to be a uh, just kind of a quality of life type thing as you are traversing through a program you'll want to name stuff like this that way you can easily navigate to it later um, so that's about as far as I want to get into doing analysis now um, we're gonna cut this one off and we'll pick up on doing more analysis and um, get into stack or get into uh, structures and get into arrays for the next video